Hi, and welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. I'm Martin Bailey, and joining us today is James Wright, Managing Director from Lime Copywriting. Welcome, James, and thank you for taking time to join me today. How are you? Hi, Martin. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm good, thank you. It, it, it's absolutely, absolutely our pleasure. My pleasure. So look, to start us off, um, probably the best place to start is why don't you tell us a bit about you and, and you know, who you are and what you do? Okay, well, as you just said, I'm the owner of Lime Copywriting, I've been a writer now for oh, about 12 years, and that was prompted by a, a sort of 30-year-old 30 30 year crisis, thinking, what do I do with my life now that I haven't really started any career as mm -hmm. such? Um, so I've been working, writing for 12 years. Lime Copywriting as a company has been around for about five years, and there's myself and three others who work there, and... Um, yep, we've just turned into a limited company. Looking forward to, to expanding even more over the coming years, hopefully. Fantastic, fantastic. So you you've been quite you've been you've been on quite a bit of a journey there in the last five years. Um what um I mean you know, obviously growing because you've got three other people working for you. So what, what do you attribute your growth to? I think it's cliche, but I think a lot of it is just hard work. Um I started really at the bottom of the industry working for 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 peanuts really it was um uh, you know i think my first job i seem to remember was 10 articles for 10 dollars which was you know <laughs> i think any writer would scoff at that now but it was it was that hard work at the beginning going through the motions understanding and learning about the business and uh really focusing on learning what 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 to do to deliver quality not cost at the beginning and then as the as the knowledge came, uh, as the knowledge came round, you can start to build your cost, uh, build your price up. Then, okay. So, so I mean, obviously, you did quite a lot. You, 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 as you said, you were doing quite a lot of understanding and learning about the business and, and and building your knowledge. So, so how did you build that knowledge? What sort of what sort of things did you do to build your knowledge on? Well, it was really learning on the job. I um, I started off working for a number of clients. I started off on a site actually called Elance, which is much maligned by. Well, it's called Upwork now, much maligned by many copywriters, but I actually found it as a really helpful place to learn. So a huge variety of clients there, learning about everything from copywriting techniques to search engine optimization, making sure that I had a really rounded uh, understanding of the industry. And that served me, I think, really well for moving forward and to confidently offer those services to other people when the when line copywriting opened. So what, what, what was your bit? I mean, that, that, you know, learning on the job. I mean, that, that that's quite challenging. As you said, you kind of you kind of focused on, on 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 quality before you started building up your up your price. Mm -hmm. Um, what sort of things did you do around quality, or what sort of things did you do to focus around that quality for your clients? I think in the copywriting world, because unfortunately there's a bit of a race to the bottom for a lot of people in that trying to, and I know I was guilty of that originally, but. Um, sorry, I've lost my train of thought now. <laughs> no, so I was just asking about quality. So, in terms of your, how, how did you focus on that quality? So there was a bit of a race to the bottom, uh, and, and you were guilty of that as well. So, so, how did you get the quality back into? Well, well, uh, there was no race to the bottom for me in terms of quality. It was in terms of price, the race to the bottom. In quality, I think it's just about being very consistent with what you're doing, and at the beginning, realizing that you're going to make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. And if you learn from those mistakes, then your quality will automatically go up when you uh, when you rectify them. So, so there was quite a lot of accepting that mistakes would be making. So rather than beating yourself up, there was more 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 focus around learning from them and, and making yourself better rather than saying, well, I failed or I've, I've not succeeded. Oh, I wouldn't say there was no beating myself up. <laughs> I think there's um, when you make a mistake, you're always going to beat yourself up a little bit. But like you say, learn from those mistakes and really move forwards. And especially at the beginning of your career, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. So yes. just, you know, like you say, just accept them and ask yourself what you can do to learn from them. Did that um, did that sort of challenge you in terms of your mindset with with regards to, um, you know, when, when you, you beat yourself up? Did you, did you find that held you back? I, don't, I didn't really beat myself up. I mean, I've got a, a history of, of a few mental health problems. So it was quite difficult when things did happen, confidence-wise. Confidence can really take a hit. But you've just got to look at the past work you've done. If you've done 20 great things and then you failed just once, then you know, you're obviously doing something right. So you've got to really say to yourself that 
you know, I've, I've, I've done a lot of good things. Don't don't focus on the bad things. Learn from the bad things, and you know, try and focus on the good things. Which is which is great advice to 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 to, to, to all business owners. I mean, it's I don't know if you you know it's just, it's called the, the 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 power of three. So mm-hmm. actually, to remove a negative thought, it takes three positive thoughts to remove a negative thought from mm-hmm. from, from 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 your mind. Um, and and you're right. Because if you stay focused on that one negative thought, then that can then just take control and perpetrate, and then you go and seek to validate it and everything else. Whereas if you then immediately go, well, wait a minute, I've, I've done these three great jobs, mm-hmm. it immediately removes from your mind and you stay positive and focused on, on on driving forward. So great, 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 great bit of a great bit of advice there. So if you were to rewind the clock, you rewind back five years, yeah, and and you know you were to start your business from square one again. Uh, is there anything? What would you, what would you do differently? Is there anything you would do differently? I think, of course, there's things I'd do differently because you've got to look back and, and realise that, yeah, definitely, there's, there's always things that we could have done differently to make things better. Um, I think I'd have been more trusting of other people. I'd have been more willing to to let the power go, as I said, as in, in a way of saying. Um, it can be quite easy when you're an owner of a business to, to become obsessed with every single part of it and have to make every bit perfect to micromanage to the nth degree. But I think... There comes a time when you've just got to just got to say, look, I trust this person. Let them get on with it. Or even if you don't trust them, just let them do it anyway and hope because you can't do everything in a business, especially when it's growing. So you've really got to delegate and let people let go a little bit. How long did it take you to realise that? Oh, it was a process of a couple of years, probably, of, of trying to work with some people, them perhaps not doing the job that I wanted to do than having to work with someone else and someone else. and then eventually you find someone who's fantastic and then that kind of lets you take the back seat so it is all about it's not just about the mentality of letting it go it's also about finding the best people to do the job and I suppose that's something else I'd, I'd do from the beginning is is really really invest more time in finding the absolute best writers as I've done now um and you know pay them well <laughs> That's that's the it, it, it does really correlate. I was I think I was guilty in the beginning of thinking I've got to try and find the best quality writers for as little money as possible. But now looking back on it, I should have spent more as I do now, paying paying really decent wages to writers so that I get the best writers coming and working for me. Yeah, I mean, you know, absolutely. I mean, you know, the, the, the people, you know. People think some of the biggest decisions are, you know, some of the most important decisions you ever make in business are around your financials and everything else. But actually, they're not. They're around your people, mm-hmm. uh, because they can they can make or break your business completely. And you, you know, they are the face. They are the ambassadors. So, so what sort of you know, you, you said that you you eventually realised that you needed to focus on bringing in the best people. Mm-hmm. What sort of processes or what sort of things did you do to 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 make sure that you were, you know? you know, crossing the T's and dotting the I's and you were getting that type of quality of person coming through? I think, firstly, you, you put job adverts up in places where the, the best people are likely to see them. For for my business, for creatives, LinkedIn was the best platform for, for searching for jobs. Um, and then you've just really got to put in the time to, to give everyone a fair chance. Uh, I'll give you an example. I put a job advert on LinkedIn about two months ago and I got 800 applications within three days. Wow. And I went through every single one. because You have to go through every single one, really, morally. You should give everyone a chance. But but also, you never know. You, you need to go through every one and really find the right people. If you just skim them, you're not necessarily going to. And then I did a second interview. I did an interview stage with 10 to 15 people. Yeah, I really took the whole process, I say seriously. Of course, I took it seriously. But... I really wanted to re make sure I got the absolute perfect person for the job. And luckily I think I have. So Yeah, but I mean, you know, 10 to 15 interviews. I mean, that's a minimum of 15 hours worth of time, if not more. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you do an hour long interview, you need half an hour to recover and repair, uh, uh, prepare. So yeah, mm-hmm. you're probably talking about closer to 20 hours. Oh yeah, it was a long process, but like I say, have to do it to, 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 to make sure you get the right person for the job. Yeah, no, but I think I think the point I'm 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 sort of reinforcing for you is, is that investment in time because mm-hmm. a lot of people you say see recruitment as being a um not a hindrance, but they don't see it as oh I've not got the t- I've not got time. Oh, I need to rush this or mm-hmm. I'll, I'll put forty five mm-hmm. 
to you and they don't necessarily invest that level of time. And it's interesting, it's that word invest because you're investing that time and investing in finding the right person to invest in your business. Oh, it really was an investment as well because that, that time I was spending doing it, I wasn't working for clients. And yes. you know, it, it does cost you money in the short term, but you've got to speculate to accumulate, as they say. So you've got to, you've got to do the work in the short term to hopefully benefit in the long term. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely, and, and you know, you, the word the word delegate is is an important word, and 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 you're very right. You know, for for a lot of people, that that takes quite a few years to uh, to that penny to drop. That you yeah. can't actually do everything. You've got to you've got to actually have you know have other people help you and and do things and take responsibility for you. Absolutely, and it's but, it's difficult, but I'm getting there. <laughs> it is, it is. I mean, it's anything you know, is any any knowledge you've taken on board, any reading you've done, or, or anything that's helped you with that. Um, I should say I, I work with a business coach, so yeah, and they've given me, they've given me um guidance on how to how to recruit. That was quite a big thing was getting a coach, and it's not a advertisement for a coaching service, but no, no. it was was getting a getting a coach and really un, finding someone who understood the hiring process and the ins and outs of it, okay. who could who could guide me through the process and make sure that I did it properly. Yeah. It, I, I, other than that I didn't do a huge amount of reading I just because for for a writing position the criteria is quite easy was that you had to be able to write and you had to have the attitude to, to get on with the company and I think just through an interview and through test pieces I, I did manage to find that quite easily right okay 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 so I mean obviously initial initial stages when you were trying to do everything yourself before you started this little breakthrough of you know delegating out to people. Uh, was, was time management a, a, a challenge for you? Yes. I think it's very, when you were uh, when I was initially um starting out and it was just I was just a one-man band, it's very difficult to be motivated sometimes when you work as a one-man, one-man crew. You know, you think, oh, I can just spend an extra hour in bed, that's fine. I'll just catch up with it later on. Or, you know, procrastination is it's a very real problem. So um sorry that yeah that's that that was probably the the biggest challenge. I think getting rid of that procrastination, having children, having a family, that certainly helps because I don't get time to procrastinate now. So but definitely time management, I think for every freelancer, unless you're absolutely dedicated, can be a problem. Yeah, and I think you 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 touched on something there as well in terms of you know, it's you're right, when you're in business on your own. Uh, you know, the, the easiest person to let down is yourself. Mm -hmm. So, as you said, you know, I'll have an extra in bed or, or, or that can wait till tomorrow or I can't be bothered doing that today. Um, they, they, they're all key uh, key behaviours that, that encroach into time management because that's what ends up, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to do it on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I worked a lot of evenings because I didn't work a lot of mornings. So. Yeah, absolutely. So, you because you, it doesn't go away, it just sits there. All it does mm -hmm. is just rotates around until you eventually deal with it. And sometimes, um, I think it's fair to say that if you don't deal with it, it actually becomes bigger than what it would have been if you'd done it when you were meant to do it. Oh, absolutely. And it gets bigger in your mind as well. The longer you leave something, the, the more you don't look forward to doing it. So that's why I try and get the worst jobs out of the day as soon as possible. <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely. So in terms of, in terms of you know, you, 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 you were talking about your you, you, you growth and you were talking about your, your quality uh, and you were talking about you know chasing to you know chase, chasing down to the bottom in terms of price when you first started out. Um, how did how did you manage your finances around that? I mean, what 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 sort of stuff did you have in place to make sure that you were still making money and you're still viable, etc.? When I first started, I managed my finances. I'd say very badly, like a lot of, I think, like a lot of freelancers probably understand. It, when when you've got the crossover between business and life as your sole trader, and you've got all the money in golf in intertwined in one, it's very hard to separate the business's money from your money. And so the, the, there's issues. There were issues there. Well, no major issues, you know. Pay my taxes and pay my bills, but you know. So I think recently becoming a limited company has helped a lot because that's that's made me really sit down and and work out how much money I need to pay myself. As a, as a as a um a member of staff, you know, it's, like, it's not I'm not the business anymore. There isn't actually a business of which I'm a member of staff, um, and that's helped a lot to 
to, to budget. Yeah, focus your mind. Focus your absolutely, mind. Absolutely, yeah, definitely focus my mind a lot. Okay. And I know, do, 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 do you run my cash flow forecast? You put you get stuff like that in place? Is that something you, you operate with? Yeah, so are you... Sorry, do I... Do, do, you, do you manage your cash flow through forecasting? Do you, do you forecast your cash flow or are you... you how, how are you managing that? Yes, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I do have systems in place now. I use a couple of programs to, to really keep an eye on the cash flow to make sure it's going through. I've got a very good accountant as well, so she helps a lot. And, yeah, no, uh, good, good, good accountants the same. Got to have a good accountant. They'll save you more money than you spend on them by a lot. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Always, but yeah. So, so yeah, I do have systems in place to manage the cash flow now and to, to make sure things are going in a more a more professional, being run in a professional way as opposed to a, a one man band. Yeah. No. Okay. Good. 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 And that's so the, the the final the final question for me today is um is where, where do you see yourself in the next five years, James? Oh, well, it's a, I'd like to see myself in the next five years still within the company, a growing company with more employees, more freelancers as well working for us. There is some concern in the industry about the impact of AI on copywriting and how that's going to go. I'd like to see that addressed so that there's some kind of stability for writers because there's hundreds of thousands, well, millions of creatives who are going to get affected by us, uh, by AI. Um, yeah, and I just like to, I just like to be in a business still, be, be happy, which I am at the moment and, uh, have a growing business with, with a varying client base and a few holidays would be good. Have you had many holidays? But Have you had many holidays or is it, is it something? No, I think uh, this 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 year was my first holiday in about four or five years. <laughs> wow! Wow! Okay! Wow! Well, that must have been that must have been loved. The, the, the family must have loved that time of year as well. Yeah, so we had a couple of weeks, and it was yeah, it was nice, stressful yeah. still, because when you're when you're a business owner, you've still got your phone attached to you just to make sure things are going okay. So it's quite difficult to switch off. But I suppose yeah, that's the that's the beauty of airplane mode, isn't it? So, well, yeah, but I mean, it's, you know, this is where this is why you 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 know you've been focusing around yourself with great people because because in time they, they they should be able to do what needs to be done without bothering you. That's the aim. That's that's the way you're saying. Five years time, that would be the aim to have a more a business that's running on its own without much, much of my input, so I can step back a little bit and uh, spend some more time with my family. Okay, great, great, great. And so when you talked about you touched on the AI, it's interesting because. I, I, I do understand your 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 concern there around AI, but I think the interesting thing for me, and this is only my view, you know, it's, it's not a, not a qualified view, it's just my view, is the one thing AI fails to deliver is personality. Oh, absolutely. There is no personality to AI content at the moment. I mean, if I've read some chat GPT stuff, but it's it's still pretty hideous. But it's going to be the very bottom rung of copywriting that. That is affected first the people that charge one pence a word and and try and get a write a thousand word article in an hour just to get it out the door they're going to be impacted because ai will be able to write as well as they do soon so that's it means that everyone else has got to step up their game and really pump out the best one best quality content with personality with feeling with and using you know all the skills that good copywriters should have yeah, and I think the other thing as well is, is I, I'm led to believe that Google and all the other search and all the other uh, engines can pick up when something has been artificially intelligently written uh, mm -hmm. and, and doesn't optimize it for SEO. Yes, and no, I, there's not that it's 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 one of those. It seems to be changing constantly, and it's one of you never know what Google's doing when it comes to their um, SEO practices. I think you've got to just remember that Google, all they care about is giving the best quality to their people. But more importantly, earning you earning themselves as much money as possible. possible. Yeah. So if AI is going to make for a better user experience, then they'll accept it in the end, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So that, like I say, that's why we have to make sure that um, you're on your game and doing doing things that AI can't, like you say, putting personality into your into your writing, using right. feelings. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely, absolutely. And I suppose the the, the, the final final piece for me: have you got any any words of advice for other business owners? Uh, who, are, who are basically looking to grow their business? I'd say don't work 20, 25 hours a day. Give yourself some time off. It's always, it's it's amazing what a break will do for you. It really does help focus the minds and you do come back stronger. 
uh, don't be afraid as well to to push forward. I spent a few years wondering about how I was going to grow the business instead of actually doing it. I should have just gone forward, pushed forward and done it without, you know, what we still think about it, but I should have taken that step really not being quite so afraid of the things that could have gone wrong and and work out think about what could go right and it's you know when it works it's a great feeling and then just enjoy the the um the feeling of being a little bit freer by working for yourself yeah no good advice good advice so i mean don't don't let fear stand in the road of your progress absolutely, um, ab- absolutely. um don't yeah, 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 pace yourself. Don't don't try and don't try and build Rome in a day because it never was. And uh, you know, keep yourself at a steady pace will keep your mental well being, your your physical well being, and your business well being in a good place. Absolutely great advice. Um, so yeah, no, so there's some some great stuff in there, James. So you know, first of all, I need to I just want to thank you for 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 your time today because I think there's some real good nuggets in there for for everybody. Um, some real good learning about your journey as well in terms of your know, time and. And, and fear and, and overcoming stuff uh, to to get to where you want to get to. So so thank you thank you for once again once again for for all your time. It's been brilliant. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's been good to speak to you. It's been absolutely my pleasure, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thanks a lot.